now, if, as I was saying just now, they were to laugh at me, as you say they do at you, it would not be at all unpleasant to pass the time at court with jests and laughter. Plato, Euthyphro. Welcome back. Let's continue our Servantine journey through history's greatest novel. In chapter 30, our heroes meet the Duke and the Duchess, two major characters who will remain unnamed throughout the remainder of part two. This brief but highly symbolic chapter has implications for feminist readings of Don Quixote. It also develops further the links between the text of 1605 and that of 1615. The Duke and Duchess state clearly that they have read the first part of Don Quixote, and the narrator informs us that they plan on having fun with knight and squire. The chapter begins with our heroes depressed after the adventure of the boat, especially Sancho, whose soul suffered for having to reach into the money bag. The narrator even tells us that Sancho resolves to leave his master. He sought an occasion on which, without having to account to his master or say goodbye, one day he might tear himself away and go home. But this idea evaporates when Don Quixote and Sancho enter a meadow in which they find a hunting party dominated by an elegant woman mounted atop a pure white palfrey or trotter pony adorned with green trappings and a silver saddle. All clear signs of nobility. Don Quixote sends Sancho on an embassy to greet this woman and Sancho happily obliges him, alluding ironically to his previous mission to find Dulcinea. You know, this isn't the first time that I've gone on embassies to highborn ladies in this life. Sancho communicates to her Don Quixote's desire to serve your lofty highness and beauteousness. And the Duchess recognizes the one with the sorrowful face about whom we have heard much in these parts and expresses her approval. Tell your master that he is most welcome to serve me and the Duke, my husband, at a country estate we have nearby. She then verifies with Sancho that Don Quixote is the one about whom there is now a printed history called the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote of La Mancha. Sancho's affirmation of his own identity exhibits meta-literary playfulness, and I am Sancho Panza, unless they switched me with another in the cradle, I mean in the press. The narrator makes clear the perspective of the nobles, the two of them having read the first part of this history and having understood from it the twisted mental state of Don Quixote, were desirous of knowing him and waited for him with great pleasure. He then explains that they planned to treat Don Quixote like a knight errant during all the time that he would stay with them and with all the ceremonies that are customary in the books of chivalry, which they had read and of which they were fond. We see here that the Aragonese nobility were fanatics about all things chivalric. Indeed, Aragon is perhaps the only place on earth where Don Quixote would have been truly at home. The jousts in Zaragoza that attract Don Quixote throughout part two make perfect sense. Did you know the vast majority of critics of Don Quixote de la Mancha believe that the Duke and Duchess are cruel characters? Now Cervantes provides slapstick humor, but it's also symbolic of overarching tragedy, a fall from grace. As Don Quixote approaches, Sancho falls off his ass, and Don Quixote, unaware that Sancho is no longer holding his stirrup, also falls off Rocinante. The Duke expresses regret, and Don Quixote responds with a hyperbole that is both ominous and funny. The Hidalgo considers himself fortunate to have met this most valiant prince, even if my fall were to have carried me to the depths of the abyss. Then he praises the Duchess, noble mistress of beauty and universal princess of courtesy. The Duke undercuts Don Quixote's praise, however, pointing out that when my lady Doña Dulcinea is involved, it's not proper to praise other beauteousnesses. So not only Sancho, but also the Duke are imitating Don Quixote's antiquated rhetoric via the medieval F instead of the modern H. Sancho's comment is fascinating and sophisticated. I have heard it said that what they call nature is like a potter who makes vases out of clay. 
and he who makes a beautiful vase can make two or three or a hundred. I say this because by my faith, my lady the Duchess does not lag in beauty to my mistress, Lady Dulcinea of Toboso. The clay potter recalls the giant urns of El Toboso made by Moriscos, which we saw at Miranda's house and Camacho's wedding. But there's more going on here. Sancho alludes to the Demiurge, a mediating entity between the spiritual and the material worlds. Similarly, Don Quixote refers to the Duchess as your great celestialness. The basis of modern feminism is respect for women. Here we see how much feminism owes to the Renaissance philosophy of Neoplatonism, which viewed women as divine manifestations, in other words, material projections of metaphysical perfection. Quixotic Mission With what title does Don Quixote address the Duke? A. Your Majesty B. Prince C. Lieutenant Correct answer, B, Prince. Don Quixote is ashamed of his squire's blunders and loquaciousness. Cervantes' comedic use of this theatrical contrast will characterize Don Quixote and Sancho's time at the Ducal Palace. Hidalgo and Squire now begin to play a modern kind of comedic odd couple, poking fun at each other's antics and delighting in each other's errors. Note also that the Duchess clearly favors Sancho. He will be her personal jester. There's something very modern about this too. Cervantes reconfigures medieval courtly love by adding humor as a factor of attraction on par with power, prestige, and wealth. The Duke now invites our hero to his palace. I suggest that Sir Knight of the Lions come to a castle of mine, which is nearby, where he will find himself received with the dignity that his high person should justly expect. As the group departs, the narrator produces yet another of a growing list of word plays contrasting Sancho and Don Quixote. To the great pleasure of the Duke and the Duchess, who considered it their great fortune to welcome to their castle this errant knight and this squandered squire. Thanks for joining me in this chapter. Hope you can join me in the next one too. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Pan. Thank you.